Hi, I'm Mike, and this is my entry for the 2016 Moog Circuit Bending Challenge. In this video, I will be circuit bending a Yamaha PortaSound PSS140 keyboard. I plan on doing the data line modifications to this keyboard. I also plan on adding an LTC1799 module, which will adjust the clock speed. I will be building a 9 volt analog voltage control low pass filter that I found online. And I also will be using a Barbie sing along karaoke machine um, to add echo and feedback. To start with, I'm going to build the enclosure. I've already prepped this a little bit by building this simple wood frame here. Built it to, to size at the, the Yamaha. It's nicely in there. And I'll show you the dimensions next. The frame has three boards that are an inch and a half wide by half an inch by 22 and a quarter inches. The two sides are three and a half by half an inch by 16. This is the front edge and the center rib sits back seven and a half inches from both sides. I cut a section from some thin plywood from an old shipping crate to fit nicely in the bottom. I used more of the same plywood to build this simple frame. It is 21 and 3 quarters by 6 by 2 and a half. All I did was just cut these little blocks here so I could screw through each there and uh, put little blocks there to give some support. The idea is this will fit inside of here. I cut a cover. This is uh, 22 and a quarter sanded down so it's a little shorter uh, by 6 and 3 quarters. This will fit on top. Cut another of the inch and a half by half inch by uh, 22 and a quarter. Uh, again, slant, sanded down so it's slightly smaller so it fits in nicely. And uh, the plan is hinges will be on the side. All the controls will mount in there. And this can swing up. I finished assembling the box and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Uh, we just got the two hinges here. The control panel swings up. Right now I just have a piece of wood that I'll block in there. So I want to use the battery pack from this old wireless train controller, but it was uh, actually set up for 12 volts, so I just cut a bolt the size of two AA batteries, place it in there, which will complete it, and now I have the 9 volts. Got the new battery pack mounted here, just with some Velcro straps. Uh, the positive runs out to a toggle switch, and that toggle switch goes to a normally closed um, switch. This will be for reset. Just, um, and then uh, the original power switch here, I'm going to remove that and then probably just clip and wire those straight together. So this will now be the new power switch. Now I'm going to go ahead and install this LTC1799 um, oscillator module. Uh, it comes with no wires attached. All I did was solder three wires onto one of the pots there. Um, I will solder a pot on here. I just don't know the value yet once I get it connected and tested. Um, I added power wires. Then I added a blue. Um, this is the wave output. Wired it all to a toggle here. The idea is that the white, the two white wires will solder onto the board in place of the original crystal, which is this silver guy right here. I will remove that and solder that on directly onto the, uh, the toggle between here and here. So when it is in this position, the signal will flow through the original crystal and back to the keyboard. With, uh, that'll be the stock sound. Then you switch it here, it'll take the signal from the module and send that to the keyboard. 
um, and then that uh, clock speed will be adjusted by the pot that I wire to here. Um, one of the things uh, the paperwork shows that this uh, requires between 2.7 and 5.5 volts. However, this is a 9 volt pack, so I poked around with a multimeter. I'm going to be pulling ground from here, and I found a pretty stable 5.2 volts on this jumper right here. So I'll be pulling for power from there, um, and I'll be wiring that all up. I've identified the original crystal to be in right here and right here, so I'm going to remove that. I'm going to first actually add a little solder on to each joint, which kind of seems opposite, but it'll help remove it just a little bit on each one. Then we'll be using some solder wick. Got the oscillator module all wired up and working well. Um, I decided just to completely remove one of the original trim pots. Uh, the paperwork that it had uh, showed the left as a fine adjustment and the right as the main adjustment. So I ended up taking out the right, the main adjustment, which was a one meg, which were perfect because actually the parts I had had one meg and 50k. Um, so I replaced uh, 1 meg and 50k there, so I have a main adjustment and a fine, and then I'm going to be using the built-in fine adjustment as kind of a limiting resistor so it doesn't glitch out. I'm going to adjust the built-in pot here as my limiting resistor right now. I have everything set to the highest setting, high pitch, um, and I'm just going to turn this up until it glitches out. Right up there, up there, it's starting to back it off a slight bit. One more. There we go. So it'll never go higher than that. So now that I've got the pitch and power controls all wired up, I'm going to start drilling the case. I laid out uh, strips of blue tape to kind of guide me, keep everything in line. I'm going to drill the pitch controls here, power controls over here. And then the, the eight data lines with the data select there. Once I drill those out, then I'll start wiring the data lines. I started drilling my case, but I found out the switches that I got for the data lines. These little cheap small switches do not have a tall enough collar to fit through. So I uh, drilled the holes basically exactly the size, slightly smaller, and the switches are going to thread in, which fit nice and tight when they do that. Now I'm going to start working on the data line modifications. How this works on the keyboard is this big IC is the main CPU, the smaller IC is the FM sound chip, and there are eight lines that connect the two. Uh, the CPU programs the FM chip by uh, sending high or low on and off signals. Um, back and forth. So we are going to be cutting those eight lines in the back and two jumpers. Uh, cutting those, soldering uh, eight wires to the main CPU chip and eight wires to the FM. I've already prepped this. I've got all my toggles installed. I've got a 16 conductor ribbon wire. So eight to the main CPU, eight to the FM chip. This will give me the ability to uh, turn the data lines on and off. In the off position, it sends it through a resistor, which basically these just all route together. Uh, these just to keep it neat, uh, which then routes it to a toggle switch. This toggle switch can then select between five volts and ground, so either a high or low state. Uh, to keep uh, the keyboard from crashing since that's how the chip is being programmed high and low This is the back of the circuit board underneath the main CPU You can see is are these two long lines here and the FM chip are, is right here The eight red lines 
all go around. Two of them hit these jumpers which jump across. Six of them come into the black on this side of the FM chip and then these two come in on this side. So I'm going to cut the traces probably somewhere over here for those six and then on the other side I'll cut those two jumpers. I cut the traces uh, linking the CPU and the sound chip. I just use an X-Acto knife, cut a line here, cut another line below, then use a small screwdriver to scrape the center clean. Now I'm going to start working on the audio filter. Uh, this is a low pass filter. I found the uh, directions at ericarcher.net. Uh, he did a really good job of documenting all the parts, schematics, and placements, and layouts, and pretty much everything you need to do. Um, so here's a quick shot of the schematic. Here's his parts list. Although there's some items on here I will not be using. It's a switch, I'll be using the one I already have for the keyboard. Um, connectors, obviously no connectors and no 9 volt snap. Uh, pretty much everything else. Uh, they said you could build this for about ten dollars. I've so far I've probably spent a little over ten dollars. Um, most of my parts I already had in bulk sets. I did have to order the Texas Instrument part, um, so I just got that in the mail. And I'm going to start working on that, and I'll just show you the next step once I get there. Okay, I'm just working on placement on all the parts. Um, how I'm doing that, for example, got a hundred. U electrolytic capacitor, which is right here. That's C7. We can look at the names page. C7. I can confirm the value of C7 is 100U, which I confirmed. And we come down here to the placement page, right here, and then I can just count out the holes for the placement. And I'm just going to continue on. Uh, down the entire list until I'm done. A uh, couple things I won't do is replace the pots. I'm just going to do wires and extend those out so I can case mount them. Um, same thing with the switch. Um, and that's about it. I'll just continue on working on this. I've got all the parts laid out. I've confirmed everything matches. Uh, the only parts that are not identical are the uh, one end capacitors. Um, in his diagrams and uh, listing, he has uh, 1N polyester caps. I could not find those, so I had to substitute that for the 1N uh, mylar film capacitors. So hopefully that doesn't change it too much. It might change the sound a little bit, but we'll see. Now that everything's placed in the correct spots, I'm just going to flip the helping hands up on their end and start soldering all of the points to the board. Okay, got all my wires soldered in and all the components attached. Uh, the three control pots will attach to these three sets of wires. Power will come in here and audio in and out here. Uh, so now I'll flip it over and start making the rear connections. Uh, they included schematics. Um, have a few different pages. There's a ground page, a virtual ground, a 9 volt, signal 1, and signal two page. So I'm just going to go through, solder all those connections on each page, and then I will show you the next step.
from the filter I've completed the ground, the virtual ground, and the 9 volt connections. You can see the, the ground as the black connections, the virtual ground as the green connections, and the 9 volt as the red. Um, as I'm making the connections I'm just using a highlighter to mark it off so I keep track of and now I'm just going to continue on to the signal 1 and signal 2 pages. I just completed the low pass filter. Um, I quickly tested it out and everything seems to be working so I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it has mix, resonance, and frequency controls, power input, ground, audio input, and audio output. Here's the back that I completed. Uh, the step-by-step -step instructions that I found at ericarcher.net, this is not my design, um, I just followed the plans that I found online. Uh, he had it laid out really well, different pages, he just followed each page to make all the connections. Um, so it's pretty easy to lay out and solder all together. And uh, now I'm going to work on mounting it into the case. I got the filter controls mounted here. The board will mount right about there. Um, I haven't got the inputs and outputs hooked up yet because now I'm going to move on to the Barbie karaoke, which the output will feed into that. Um, and the input of this will come from the speaker. So I'm going to switch over and start on the Barbie karaoke, which will go right in here. Got the Barbie karaoke all torn apart. Now I'm going to start removing all the circuit boards, getting rid of everything I don't need, and transferring it over to the case. Uh, I'm going to be using the schematic I found on Casper Electronics uh, for the Barbie karaoke. It shows where to connect the echo pitch as well as an echo decay that I'm going to be adding and possibly one of the echo feedbacks so I'm going to just start disassembling this and transferring over to that case on the Barbie karaoke machine this bottom pot is the volume and this upper left pot is a mix between auxiliary and mic so my plan is to feed audio into both the mic and the auxiliary on the back of the unit. And I will use this pot to mix between the two. And we, uh, the mic will have the echo built in from here and adjustments that I add. And then I will relocate both of these pots uh, with ribbon wire so I can extend them and place them wherever I want in the case. Got the circuit from the Barbie karaoke. I've extended the volume and the mic auxiliary mix pots out with some ribbon wire. This is the auxiliary input. Got our power, speaker outputs. Um, and then I'm going to, I already prepped some wires. Uh, this is going to be the um, echo decay adjustment. And then coarse and uh, fine adjustments for the echo pitch. And I'll be attaching those on the spots for the echo pitch here, an echo delay, and there, and there. And again, this schematic is found at casperelectronics.com. Okay, I've got the echo decay and echo pitch controls attached to the Barbie karaoke circuit and now I'm going to work on mounting it all in here. This is the Barbie karaoke circuit board and now I'm going to remove the R17 resistor which is the pitch resistor and I'm going to solder it onto a toggle switch just like how I did with the original uh, clock resistor for the keyboard. So I'm going to be doing the same thing for the pitch resistor on the Barbie karaoke. Got the Barbie karaoke all completed. I kind of glued it together with some small toothpicks in here and some hot glue just to keep it off of each other. I extended the auxiliary 
mic mix control, the main volume, added the echo decay, and these are all the pitch controls. See where the echo decay connects these wires right there. And basically these are the pitch connection points. That's where the original resistor was in there. I removed it, ran it out, and reinstalled the original pitch resistor onto the toggle, which can select between original or run through two different pots for a coarse and fine adjustment. So now I'm all done with that. I'm gonna um, drill the case. I already mapped out where I want the pots and drill that and then mount everything up into the case. Now I'm going to wire up the Barbie karaoke with the rest of the keyboard. How this works is the sound from the original speaker is going to run through the um, low pass filter. I can control it, then it will come back out here. I'm going to feed that signal into both the auxiliary and the mic inputs of the Barbie karaoke. And then I will use the built-in pot to mix between basically a wet and a dry effect. I've got everything wired up, tested, and working. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to just break it all down so I can paint the control panel section black and stain all of the wood. I got the wood frame all stained. And the control panel painted all black inside and out. And now I'm going to just work on reinstalling all the components back into the wood frame. Okay, now everything's complete and I'll just run through all the controls. We have pitch select. In the up position it is the stock timing with the original crystal. In the down position it is routed to the LTC 1799 um, oscillator module which is controlled by a pitch coarse and a pitch fine adjustments. Uh, then we have uh, data lines. These are the eight data lines between the main CPU and the FM sound chip. In the up position, they are connected normally. In the down position, they are open. And when they are open, they are actually routed to this high-low select, which selects between either positive uh, 5 volts or ground, which will uh, give different effects depending on um, how you use it. Then we have the low-pass filter. Low-pass filter mix frequency and resonance. Then the Barbie karaoke, uh, the echo mix, this mix between um, no echo and echo. Um, then the echo decay, echo pitch select, kind of like the um, LTC uh, select. In the up position it is uh, stock timing. In the down position is controlled by these two pots. Uh, coarse and a fine adjustment. And then we have the main power toggle and a reset, just a momentary reset, and volume output. Here's the bottom of my finished keyboard. The LTC1799 module to control pitch with its controls and select out here. The data line modification toggles up here that connect to here. The low pass filter with its controls the Barbie karaoke with its controls, output level, a reset, a master power, a quarter inch output, and that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to explain how to use the data line modifications. To do this, I'm only going to use two sounds number 54, which is leaf spring, and number 33, which is gurgle pretty two different sounding. Um, so right now we're on 33. I'm going to shut a few data lines off which route it to here. Then I'm going to select another sound 54, turn those data lines back on. And now we have somewhat of a mixed sound. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to 33. This time, first I'm going to change the high-low select, change those same two data lines back to 54, data lines back, 
And now a totally different sound, but doing the same switch except for a different high-low select. So there are many different combinations for all the different sounds. Not everything works, but some things work better than others. Thank you. 